So one thing that you guys don't might know about me is that in high school, I was a competitive figure skater. Um, I began skating when I was around six years old after my dad took me to a holiday ice rink, and I was really bad at it. Um, but from the moment I stepped on the ice and still 12 years later, it's become such a big part of my life. Um, one of the most like unique things about the sport, I believe, is its history. Um, many sports, like you start with football or baseball, and it starts with a ball, and then after a couple of rule changes, you still have the sport that's played today. But ice skating actually has a completely different and unique story of how it got its start that I'm going to share with you today. Um, the so I'm going to go into the origin of figure skating and how it has evolved to become, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful <laughs> and graceful sports today. So, according to scientist Federico Fomonti, the history of ice skating is set to date back to 5,000 years ago in Finland. Um, so, quick geography lesson for you. Finland has a large concentration of lakes. And there's, so in order to get where you need to be, you have to walk around the lake, and that proved to be a hassle. So, they were looking to cut back on travel time in the winter, so after the ice froze over, they came up with the idea of why don't we just skate on the ice instead of walking around it. So figure skating was actually developed originally for this intent of practically traveling or transportation purposes rather than artistically or athletically. And so these are what the first skates, according to historian Frederick <coughs> Birmingham. Um, this is what we believe to look like. We don't know for sure. Um, so as you can see, there is a wooden bone at the bottom that was usually like horse bone or cow in some cases. Um, and they would keep some of the fat on it so you could have like less friction when you glide across the ice, so it made you go faster. And then you would tie it onto the bottom of your shoe or your foot with like usually like a leather strap um, to help it like secure it on. And then they also had poles or sticks that they would use to like push themselves across the ice. So not really the same thing as what you would imagine figure skating would do today. Um, so then moving into the 17th and 18th century, according to the Dictionary of American History, Ice skating slowly began to change during this time period, especially in, with the Dutch in the Netherlands. So here we see um, figure skating now is limited to the upper or elite classes, and it kind of began to develop more of an artistic form rather than for transportation. Um, so in 1742, the first skating association was founded, and that was called the Edinburgh Skating Club. And additionally, in 1772, the first instructional book um, was written, which had basic concepts concepts of spins and like figure eights. So here we see that figure skating is starting to move away from this tradition or from the original purpose of transportation. Now it's kind of starting to develop um, a more artistic form. So it was seen as something beautiful or something graceful that only the upper and classes could do. And you were seen like highly respected if you were able to figure skate during this time period. Um, also during this time is when the first competition began. So it kind of started to, it, was, it started to change. Like it was completely different than its original purpose. Um, the skates also changed to account for this new purpose in skating. According to skater Barbara Drinkwater, during this era with the change in purpose also came the change in the design of the skates. So here you no longer see the animal bone, but rather um, what you're seeing here is a steel blade. Um, What's most important in this is that the bottoms were sharpened in order to aid movement. So here you see a toe pick that's more here. Um, and that allowed for balance and movement, so you didn't have to use the poles of the sticks anymore. The um, edge blade, I know well the toe pick, helped you balance. So when you stood on the ice, like you were, you didn't have to push yourself, like you could use your feet now. Um, they still didn't have the actual boots like you see today. You would strap it onto like your snow boots or something. Um, but later, more into the 18th century, you start to see the boot and the blade being sold and created together. So, today, so the, Smith the Smithsonian Magazine details that figure skating began to evolve once more in the 20th century. Um, so, it combined the artistic character that had been created in the 16th to 18th century, but now it had more of an athletic character. It began to be viewed as a sport rather than something artistic. Um, and one of the most important things that came out of this time period was the incorporation of jumps. So in the Olympics, when you see the male or the female figure skaters jumping really high, like, that's what started here. Um, in 1908 was figure skating's Olympic debut. And figure skating was actually the first winter sport introduced to the Olympics. 
So it's the Winter Olympics will miss sport, which is a fun fact. And in the 1990s, figure skating, believe it or not, was the most watched sport in the United States, as stated by the St. James Encyclopedia of Popular Culture. Um, additionally, the construction of new rinks allowed for more intensive training and improved performance. So they created places where you could go and practice and really perfect the sport. They also made them bigger to allow for higher and like bigger jumps to happen. Um, and then this time period, and today still, um, it really emphasized three things. It emphasized speed, performance, and dynamic movements, which is what came from the 16th to 18th century. Um, so I'll give you a brief overview of what the competitions and skating looks like today, um, referenced by the New York Times. So competition season for skating runs roughly between August and May, depending on what level you're competing at and how far you um, like move on. The competitions include pre-novice, novice, junior, and senior events. So you can improve, get better, and compete at higher level and eventually Olympic level events. Um, there are two programs that you do during these competitions. You have your short program, which is roughly two to three minutes that you do at the beginning. Everyone does their short program, and then everyone competes a second time with their long program, which is roughly five to seven minutes. And then they combine your scores from both programs to determine the winner. And each of your programs have to include elements of spins, jumps, footwork, and artistic elements. And then these are what the skates look like today. Um, on the left, those are women's skate, and then on the on the left is a men's. Okay, your left is a women's skate. My then the men's is the black. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Um, so here you see you have the first closed toed boot and blade all together. Um, the blades are thinner. So they're lighter and faster um, to allow for more movement also. And then, importantly, the toe picks on both of these are much larger than what you would see in the um, 17th century to support the more advanced jumps that came along with it. So figure skating evolved and changed immensely within the span of 5,000 years, which is a crazy amount of time, and is arguably the most incredible sport. Skating accounted for and changed with the era and provided transportation, artistic expression, and an athletic outlet for people across centuries. And I think it's really important to understand the unique history um, in order to appreciate the sport in its entirety.